aspirin may be something that we probably shouldn't avoid so how then do we mitigate or reduce or lessen the the side effects of aspirin welcome to this spring life and health channel uh, today we're going to talk about the side effects of aspirin and how to mitigate or how to reduce those side effects some people cannot take aspirin for obvious reasons we will, not, we will mention those and we want to see how you can reduce the side effects of aspirin so that you can take advantage of aspirin and use it to protect yourself against strokes and heart attacks and of course all the other cardiovascular diseases side effects of aspirin that we want to hit on are one aspirin may raise your blood pressure aspirin being an NSAID or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory uh, drug as a class effect can raise your blood pressure if taken in higher doses now we are not talking about higher doses but if you are already somebody that uses aspirin on a, on a, a higher dose for pain treatment to for pain or for arthritis then obviously this is going to be a problem because the doses are high enough to raise your blood pressure but that's not the dose we are talking about. We are talking about low dose aspirin. So this effect may not be as pronounced um, in, in, in this instance. We still want to mention that aspirin can moderately raise your blood pressure. Even though we recommend that you take aspirin if you are hypertensive, because hypertension or high blood pressure can lead to a stroke or a heart attack. So you take aspirin to prevent the stroke or heart attack from happening because you have high blood pressure. And hopefully you'll be taking medications to reduce your blood pressure. And so the issue of aspirin raising your blood pressure a little bit wouldn't be a problem. Some of the drugs along with aspirin that can do that are ibuprofen or brufen, naproxen, uh, all the other assets that you can think of. When you are buying a pain medication or arthritis medication, make sure you look on the back of the bottle to make sure it is not, it doesn't say it's an asset. Otherwise, the same problems with aspirin can also be found in those. Now, aspirin, apart from being able to raise your blood pressure, aspirin can also affect your kidneys. And of course, this is also so with all those other drugs like aspirin or the NSAIDs ibuprofen and naproxen the common ones over the counter i'm, I'm more uh, careful of saying because those you can just work in the store and buy the other ones are prescription so uh, hopefully your provider knows and will not give it to you if you already um, have any predisposition to kidney disease or or hypertension ibuprofen and naproxen which you can get they can affect your kidneys just like aspirin can so aspirin in a higher dose can also affect your kidneys because aspirin is the first NSAID. The other thing is that aspirin can irritate your bowels. Aspirin can cause irritation of your uh, gastrointestinal tract and cause bleeding. Uh, people who have uh, 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 problems with bleeding, whether um, after they pass their stools or, or just occasional bleeding, wherever it may be, such people are not encouraged to take aspirin because aspirin by itself can cause irritation of the uh, gastrointestinal system and lead to bleeding inner bleeds uh, rectal bleeds and all such uh, forms of bleeding so uh, we're just going to hit on these three risks with associated with aspirin how are we going to mitigate them because aspirin is important if you have a high risk for cardiovascular diseases such as a stroke or heart attack or even a peripheral artery disease a pad a dvt and all those you know uh, if you are prone to blood clots aspirin may be something that we probably shouldn't avoid so how then do we mitigate or reduce or lessen the the side effects of aspirin with those that we have mentioned let's suggest uh, um, how to avoid them we said that aspirin can raise your blood pressure on a higher dose uh, form so then what we can do is in order for you to be able to take advantage of aspirin you got to exercise do the things that will make your blood pressure reduce so that it will counter it if you have to actually take aspirin so eat grains eat the greens take more potassium um, rich foods bananas as well as uh, all the, those that you can think of uh, avocados and stuff like that eat fish eat nuts all those things help uh, reduce your blood pressure if your diet is gonna be chained towards that you can reduce your blood pressure so you can mitigate 
the effects of aspirin if you have to take an aspirin. Apart from diet, you need to exercise. Uh, frequent exercise, routine exercise such as 30 minutes or 40 minutes of exercise daily or even three times a week would do the job. Uh, will reduce your blood pressure if you have to take aspirin. So that is how you mitigate the, the aspirin's effect on your blood pressure. And then the most important thing that I want to hit on is if your aspirin is a low dose form of aspirin, such as 81 milligrams to 100 milligrams, then this effect may not even be uh, really clinically significant. It may not be important to think that your blood pressure is going to go up because that's a low dose. That's why we call it baby aspirin. Uh, um, the effect is not much but if you take something above 325 milligrams that is when these can be a little more uh, pronounced the second way to mitigate the effect of uh, the bad effect of aspirin to prevent kidney disease is also to take the lower dose uh, for preventing um, heart disease and strokes the other thing is to prevent aspirin from causing any issues with your kidneys make sure you are hydrated the, issues, uh, the issue with um, the NSAIDs or aspirin is make sure that when you take aspirin, you drink more fluids, more fluids. Uh, the more fluids you take with your uh, aspirin, the less an issue uh, it's going to have on your kidneys. That being said, the most important thing to do is to take a low dose aspirin, not a high dose aspirin. Obviously, studies don't show any importance with high dose aspirin for preventing stroke. Don't think that because we say aspirin may be good to use to prevent strokes and heart attacks, you're going to take a higher dose because that means you're going to protect yourself more. No. Studies only show 81 milligrams, even 75 milligrams a day uh, for the prevention of heart attacks and strokes. And that dose does not significantly or clinically uh, produce any kidney disease, especially when you take it with more fluid. All right, the other way to mitigate the bad effects of, of or the side effects of um, aspirin. Well, which one is the GI or gastrointestinal irritation and bleeding is to take it with food. If you take the low dose aspirin with food, uh, you are reducing the, the contact of aspirin with your intestinal walls and thereby um, making it less likely that you bleed on aspirin. And then also the other way is uh, take aspirin which is enteric coated. They are coated aspirin. So if you're buying your aspirin on the shelf, look for ones that have been enteric coated. They will say coated aspirin. So those are protected from your um, asp uh, from your stomach. So uh, the only place they dissolve is in your intestines, and they are protected, and uh, and it reduces basically your um, your contact with. The, uh, with the aspirin and thereby reducing the irritation that aspirin can cause. So you take it with food and also when you are buying, buy the enteric coated ones. And then again, I will stress, it has to be a low dose aspirin. Low dose or baby aspirins, 75 milligrams to 85, 81 milligrams to 100 milligrams are also not that bad in terms of the side effects. So dose three, taking it with food, taking a low dose, and also taking it enteric coated or the coated aspirin will ensure that you don't get the side effects of GI bleeds. That being said, I also want to caution you that if you already have an ulcer, a bleeding ulcer, a rectal bleeds, or a previous history of an ulcer, you've had an ulcer before that is cured, or in the past you used to bleed, you know, uh, rectally and is cured, then you have to talk with your doctor before you initiate aspirin. The recommendation may not be that you take aspirin, especially if you are prone to getting GI bleeds again, uh, but definitely talk with your doctor if you have any question. Don't just decide and buy aspirin because you don't have the bleeding anymore because it can spark it up again if you had an ulcer that was bleeding. Do not take aspirin without the consent of your doctor. Now this is for primary prevention of heart attacks, strokes, and the rest. But for people who have already had a heart attack, who have already had a stroke, your case is called a secondary prevention. For you, the dose of aspirin may be higher than the 81 milligrams or the BB aspirin because you had already have um, the cardiovascular disease and your risk of having it again is higher than the person who has never had a heart attack. So if you have a heart attack, if you had a heart attack before, most likely you're, uh, you can have a heart attack again. The same way if you had a stroke before, you can have a stroke again. So for you, your dose of aspirin may actually be higher than the 81 or BB aspirin that we recommend. 
so that could be like 325 milligrams but then again don't go out there and buy an aspirin without the consent of your provider your doctor must be informed and as a matter of fact they are the ones that recommend you to take it but if they haven't asked you to buy it or they haven't given it to you you can always ask them so that you work with them to decide whether or not aspirin is good for you thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to this channel and if you have subscribed share the video comment and ask questions in the comment section beloved i wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers